Okay, a lot of spiritual seekers have been in that timeless, infinite stillness. And the Course in Miracles, you're actually using lessons or prayers, uh, like I pray for a miracle to see this differently, or God is the love in which I forgive. And it's like, well, if, you know, when the ferocity to be in the infinite comes, it can create like a duality, which is like, I want to be in the infinite free of thoughts, and all my thoughts are meaningless anyway. So why do I have to keep using um, words? And isn't this going to create a stumbling block, especially if I'm sort of very compulsive or obsessive around this in my pursuit of total freedom? And I th for me, the easiest way out of that is to know that, um, as I sort of see it, and of course the miracles are aimed at enlightenment. But here's the thing. So the... The, the, the idea is, you know, you've got to, and I think the observer is really, really helpful on this. It's like, who's saying the words? Is my ego saying the words, trying to be free? Or is the, are these words coming out of the infinite? You see? So, uh, so nobody's saying the words. So, like I could say, uh, I pray for a miracle to see this differently. Well, who's the me that's praying? Now, it's different actually, because it, you'll, you'll sort of see this. Like, if the, if the me is praying, like my ego is praying, I, my, myself identified as an ego, is praying for a miracle to see it differently, um, then, you know, that's still not the ultimate thing. But is there another way of, of the prayers happening with there being no ego? So, can the words be omitted from nothing? You know, is nobody saying that? And if nobody's saying that, is it a problem if those words are being said, and, but nobody's saying them, then there isn't a problem. So it's like, so you can just, so the course is, I, th I think, very, very helpful in not getting re-identified with the illusion. So it's almost like a defense, but it's like, who's saying the defense? You know, like, this world is meaningless. That's, that's quite beautiful, really. Those words, as long as the ego's not saying them, are almost like a, a protective mantra to keep one in the infinite timeless flow. So, so there's nothing wrong with words being spoken, you know, but who speaks them? Does the body speak the words? Uh, is the ego speaking the words? Or is nobody speaking the words? Or is the oneness? Or are they coming out of nowhere and going, going nowhere and they mean nothing? So in that way, I would say, that's the way I would do the Course in Miracles eventually, as you get to that place, is that there's no fear of a, you know, I pray for a miracle to see this differently being said throughout the day if nobody's saying them. You know, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be something that's going to create what I'd call a mental, a mental fog. You know, it's like this is very, very mental and I have to remember to do this and it's my ego that's doing this and maybe this is keeping me in thoughts. Suddenly the, the, it can be said from nowhere or nobody's saying it. You see, so in that way, then it doesn't become a block to freedom. And eventually, it is that way. In the flow, so words do happen, but nobody speaks them, and there hardly there's hardly any memory of them anyway, because they're so meaningless. But it doesn't mean that uh, because there's no person there that speaks the words. So I just do it from that way, um, and let go of the idea that the words can't be spoken, but there's nobody actually speaking them. So it's okay if they get spoken, or if they don't get spoken. But it's not a thing which creates a mental block to freedom uh, when one was doing the Course in Miracles.